am Kim Campbell, and Alzheimer's has affected not only my husband, Glenn, but our entire family. Before we got the diagnosis of Alzheimer's, um, I noticed that Glenn was doing some really odd things, and one of them was shadowing me. Um, if I went into the kitchen, he went into the kitchen. If I went into the bedroom, he'd go in the bedroom. Um, he just followed me everywhere, and he, he didn't want me out of his sight. But later on, once we got the diagnosis of Alzheimer's, I learned to use that to my advantage because people with dementia, for some reason, a lot of them have an aversion to taking a bath. We think of it as a very simple routine that we do every morning or every evening. But for people with dementia, the act of bathing you like an shower? It's very complicated. And there might be fears involved that weren't there when we were younger, like fear of falling, uh, fear of water. A lot of people with Alzheimer's are afraid of water. They don't know where it comes from, particularly if it comes from a shower head. So there's a lot of complicated feelings that go along with bathing. One time I was in his room and I was trying to take his, his shirt off so that I could get him, you know, into the bathroom and get him cleaned up. And he jerked away from me and he pointed at the wall and said, not in front of them. And I looked at the wall and I had placed all these family pictures on his wall. And he thought there were people looking at him. So he was really just being modest. So what I did was I moved all the pictures in the room to just one wall. And then the next time I tried to help him change his clothes or something, I would make sure he was facing the opposite way. So that helped a little bit. Sometimes people who are living with dementia look in the mirror and they say, who is that old person in my bathroom? Make him get out because they're not recognizing their own face. And if that happens, you can just put a towel over the bathroom mirror, cover it up so that they're not anxious. Oh, that sounds like me. <laughs> well, Bill, I'd say get you a towel. <laughs> first thing you need to think about is making somebody comfortable. Start out with a smile. Don't say, let's go get a bath. Smile. How are you today? Have a conversation. It's time for us to take a shower. Would you like to do it now or in 15 minutes? That gives the people control when they've lost so much control. Hi, my name is Chris, and today we're going to talk about bathing. And first thing we're going to do is see that the bathroom is safe. Safety's key importance in all aspects of our lives. But particularly for people who have dementia, we need to be three steps ahead in thinking about safety. So if we're thinking about bathing, we need to be sure that there are non-slip rugs in front of the shower or bathtub, that the person has shower shoes so that their feet don't feel like they're slipping, that they have something they can grab onto. Uh, it can be either be a bar that's on the outside of the tub or a bar that's on the inside of the tub, but something they can hold on to. And that's very critical to help people feel, again, in control and to feel like they're not gonna slip and fall. And then you need to turn the shower on before you ever bring the person into the room and let the room get steamy hot so that when they walk into the room and you're helping them take their clothes off for the shower, they're not freezing. Wonderful. I'm going to throw this towel right over your shoulders. Keep it nice and warm. You don't need to take a bath every day. Surprise, particularly if you're older, because older people's skin loses their ability to make as much oil as we once had. And so if you bathe too often and use too strong a soap, it's going to impact their skin. 
So, you know, every other day might be okay. If a person is incontinent, you may need to wash the areas that's affected by the incontinency. You can do sponge baths. You can use no rinse soap and no rinse shampoo. Gets people as clean as any kind of other soap will do. Be sure to not let the water come pounding down on their head because that's often very frightening. So you can pivot the shower head so that it runs against the wall or better yet, get a handheld shower and even ask the person to help hold the shower head. So be sure that it's not too hot or too cold. Uh, test it and have them test it, but don't have them change it because they may put it too hot because of what they're feeling. As you're showering, if it seems to be getting too hot or too cold, you can adjust as well. What you talk about is what they're interested in. So whatever the topic of the day is that you can find that they're interested, it might be for a man, it could be sports, it could be um, an upcoming family event, it could be politics. One of the most sensitive questions that family members ask is, if I'm a daughter caring for my dad, I feel very awkward and uncomfortable giving him my bath, and so does he. So one solution might be to have somebody come in and bathe the person a couple times a week, somebody of the same sex. Uh, as the disease progresses, it becomes less of an issue because the person with dementia may not recognize that uh, that's my son or that's my daughter, and so that issue resolves itself. But so many families face that, and they don't know where to look. You know, they don't know that you can just hire somebody to come in and pay. After the bath, be sure to pat the person dry, not rub their skin because it's skin so fragile, and then use lotion all over to moisturize the skin. Very important. Use a lotion that they like the smell of. Say, do you like this one or this one? One of the things I hear from family caregivers about the act of bathing a family member is that they grow closer together because they're sharing an experience that they never have shared before. And so the time spent together getting ready, actual doing the bathing, uh, drying off and picking out clothes is a very um, supportive kind of uh, activity that they tend to, over time, really enjoy. And here's another thing that's helpful. If you are bathing your family member of the opposite sex, okay, I'll take care of that. Okay. you can cover them up so that they don't feel exposed. So put a towel around their shoulder, put one around their hips, and don't remove those towels. Just wash underneath them so that they're always covered up. So I would encourage caregivers not to be afraid to tackle any of the aspects of bathing. It can be a very rewarding experience. The essence of the person, I don't think that ever really goes away, and I think that the one thing people with dementia never lose is the ability to love and be loved. I mean, at least we haven't lost that yet. Glenn will always be loved, not only by me, but by millions. Oh, and I can.